make a carrot cake. Amy's going to help me start out. She's just going to start prepping. So uh, she's going to start prepping the carrots. She's going to peel them and then we got to grate them for the carrot cake. I'm going to just start getting out the ingredients for the carrot cake and turn the oven on preheat. So Amy's almost finished with the carrots. Then we're going to grate them with our handy dandy grater. We're gonna go, I'm gonna go rinse these off and snip the ends off. You need three cups of grated carrot for this cake. And of course you can use a food processor if you want to, but I prefer to use my handy dandy grater. It's easier to clean up. Amy's helping me. Um, she just asked a question about, I said, what do you think goes in a cake first? And she said, the dry ingredients. And I said, false. It's actually the butter and the sugar or the shortening, butter and shortening, however it works. Some cakes use butter and shortening. Some use just shortening. And, uh, and you always mix your shortening or butter or both with your sugar, then add the eggs one at a time. That's the way all cakes are made. So she was asking me about, what'd you say about flour? I said that if you, when you make a cake, you would mix up the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients separately and then add them together. Yeah. And so I was telling her back in the day, and some women still do it for fun. Um, back in the day, our houses weren't conditioned. And so our flour would get a lot more lumpy and it was always a must to sift your flour. And this carrot cake's not real loaded with spice. If you want it to be a lot spicier, you add the spice, but this is a light, fresh, light carrot cake. All right, she's gonna start out with two and a half cups of sugar. Okay. And um, now we're gonna add our eggs one at a time. So she'll crack them individually and add them to the mix. Okay, I'm gonna bring the camera closer because I want y'all to see how pretty and fluffy this looks with these eggs. It's really pretty and frothy. After you add your oil, you're going to go ahead and put in your cinnamon and ginger. It's going to be one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon and a half teaspoon of ginger. Ground ginger and cinnamon. Now we're going to add two and a quarter cups of self-rising flour. It's a little better. So you need to be making those kind of level when you bake. I'm trying. You can use your finger. mixer off because you don't want to over mix your cake. I'm going to beat this down and we need to scrape the sides a little. I'm going to take
take these golden raisins and I'm going to toss them in a little flour before we add them and that way they don't float to the bottom of the cake. And that's the last thing we'll add. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and rake the carrots in. This is three cups of carrot. I'm trying not to make a mess. I think we've already made a mess. You know, but I'm trying not to make it worse. Okay, and then we also put in pecans. So I believe it's a cup of pecans. Will you look over there and see if it's a cup? Yeah. A cup of chopped pecans. So now we're going to turn it back on. And we're just going to fold the raisins in at the end. Because I don't want to knock the flour off of them. Because you want them to uh, stay up in your cake batter. So we're going to mix this up nice. Did you scrape the actual sides in the middle? Let mm -hmm. me see that spatula. Let me show you. When you do a cake and cookies or anything with this, you need to kind of go down the edge here too. You went around the other edges, didn't you? Yeah. I've never used a mixer like this. I know it's really different. I'm going to take this. All right. We're going to turn this back on. to it. We're going to get this in our pans. We're going to flip, uh, fold these raisins in and get them in our baking pans. So, all right, I always spray the pans over the sink. I'm be spraying these. These are my new nonstick uh, gold pans. I absolutely love them. They're eight inches, which makes you have a taller, prettier cake once it's iced. But you got to make sure you got a cake dome that'll cover it. All right, now we're going to fold in our raisins that are coated with our flour. I'm going to give Amy a spoon and she's just going to fold them into the mix and then we're going to put them in the cake pans and get them in the oven. Boy, we love carrot cake and this is such a good light one. These are golden raisins. Do I just... Yep, just pour them in there. There you go. And now you're just going to kind of fold them in so that you don't knock all the flour off of them. All right, that looks good. You think you got them in there good? This one. No. Okay. Now we're just going to pour the mix in the pans and um, just pick it up and pour it in. You're going to try to get about the same amount in every pan. You want me to do it or you, you want to do it? I can do it. Okay. Nice gold pans for our golden carrot cake. Okay, we're going to get them in the oven and you're going to bake these until they're done. Now it's carrot cake. Takes carrot cake longer to get done because it's got a lot of fruit in it and the carrots in it. So just get ready to um, for it to be in there for a while. All right, we're going to bake these at 325 degrees for one hour. All right, the cakes are done. You can see our little appetizer there in the back. But the appetizer is actually our lunch. Little Smokies wrapped in croissant. This cake is beautiful, y'all. It is gorgeous. I'll let you see it up close, and we'll ice it in a minute. Now you're going to let these cool about 10 minutes or so until the pan is cool enough to touch, and then you're going to flip them out. All right, they turned out really pretty. Amy did a good job. She has since retired from helping. So we're going to flip these out on some parchment. You're going to wait until the pan, you can actually pick it up. It's still warm, but you can pick it up before you flip it out. And we did flour those raisins, and they still went to the bottom. But it don't matter. The 
cake will be iced. It will be absolutely delicious. Looks pretty and orange on the bottom. That one got a little browner. That one was in the back of the stove and this one was in the front. You can tell a difference. All right, let's go to town making our beautiful creamy cream cheese icing that everybody loves. We're gonna start out with a stick of butter. and a pack of Philadelphia cream cheese and have them sitting out at least a couple of hours so that they're room temperature. And it's Thanksgiving day, so I don't have everything laid out and ready because I've cooked a ton of food. You can see right here on the table, we've got pecan pie, we've got Georgie porgy pie, we've got a sweet potato souffle, and now we're making icing. So if you're wondering why I'm not organized, that is why I'm cooking up a storm. All right, we're gonna turn this on and we're gonna cream these two together. We're gonna to use a little cream and a little bit of uh, powdered sugar. Now I'm gonna scrape the sides one time, start mixing it again, and then I'm gonna start adding four and a half cups of powdered sugar. scrape the sides and then I'm gonna turn it up on high and get it mixed in real good and then we're gonna ice our delicious carrot cake y'all all right I'm gonna ice this on a couple of paper plates because I want to put it on the serving tray and because it is cream cheese it has to be refrigerated and I don't want my big my beautiful cake plate in the refrigerator so I'm icing it on this and then I'll place this on the cake plate when I get it out of the refrigerator, serve it. We're gonna start with our layers. Nothing says fall and Thanksgiving like carrot cake. Delicious. I love my new cake pans too. It's nice and straight. I really like it. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough icing to uh, pipe or anything, so I'm probably just gonna ice it and put the pecans on the top. So here's our toasted pecans. I've got my little chopper, and I'm gonna do about half at a time. Then I'm just gonna put them right back on this. When I'm done. Amy wanted her chopped pretty small. It looks good. So I just push it down the side, grab it, and smooth it out. Carrot cake is an easy cake to ice because it's not crumbly and it's not going to make a mess. And coat our spatula in pecans and get a bite. The perks of making the cake, right? Okay, this is another reason you want to ice it on something like this. And you're going to take your pecans and you're going to coat the sides of the cake. And if you have any left, save them for cookies or brownies or whatever. Coffee cake, muffins. delicious carrot cake. It's been in the refrigerator for about a couple of hours, so we should be able to cut it good. It's nice and moist, I'll tell you that right now.
Looks good, don't it? Look at all that good stuff, y'all. I'm ready to eat it. It's so moist and delicious. And it's not real spicy. My carrot cake doesn't have a lot of spice in it. Mm. That's good, y'all. It's so good my dog's having to have a snack too, if you hear her crunching. I hope y'all have a wonderful day. And thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. Bye, y'all. Love ya.